Hi and welcome to your world. I'm Dara Kamarani. Let's begin our first segment of today's episode of your world. In our first segment, the see South Korean Ministry of Justice plans to ease visa requirements for the skilled foreign workers amid the manpower shortage in South Korea. And world's largest hydro-solar power station in China that has been put into operation on Sunday. But let's start from Indonesia, where Indonesia will be hosting Under-17 World Cup. The appointment of Indonesia as a host for U-17 World Cup 2023 was announced after FIFA held a council meeting on Friday, June 23, 2023. Chairman of the Indonesian Football Association or PSSI, Eric Tohir, in a press conference in Jakarta on Saturday, said this moment gives a chance to various parties to unite and help make it a successful event. Eric said that the appointment of Indonesia as a host for U-17 World Cup, which will run from November 10 to December 2, 2023, needs to be celebrated. But it would be more than this, it must be fight it for, to support young Garuda squad to thrive in the international level. Eric asked every related parties to maximize the preparation of the U-17 national team to play in the upcoming U-17 World Cup. FPCI organized Indonesia Net Zero Summit or INZS 2023 as its commitment to participate in observing climate issues in Indonesia and to advocate more actions through various programs. Through the summit, the community also wanted to contribute to Indonesia to achieve net zero emission. The event was held in collaboration with more than 100 partners, such as organizations, universities, and various communities concerned with the environment issues. Coordinating Minister for Maritime Affairs and Investment, Luhut Bin Sarpanjaitan, was among those who attended the summit. Indonesia Net Zero Summit 2023 is an annual climate conference held by the FPCI as a joint meeting for ministers, officials, diplomats, youth, civil society organizations, musicians, celebrities, and various other parties to discuss climate issues, especially in Indonesia. This initiative aims to gather and strengthen Indonesia's commitment to save the nation's future for the climate crisis. Ministry of Justice plans to ease visa requirements for the skilled foreign workers amid the manpower shortage in South Korea. Foreign workers who became skilled by working steadily in manual labor will have an easier time getting long-term work visas. The Ministry of Justice announced that the foreign skilled workers employment system would be reorganized to incorporate industry demands. The ministry shortened the duration of employment requirement for visa issuance from five years to four. Also, more workers will be selected for a visa. The program to select 5,000 foreign workers this year 
who wrapped up earlier than planned in July. Until now, between 1 and 2,000 skilled workers were selected each year, but local governments have been arguing that the number is far too little. A company was able to hire up to eight foreign skilled workers, but employment of such workers will be differentiated by company size. Firms will be allowed to hire up to 20% of the local labor force. Manufacturers outside of the capital region will be able to fill up to 30% of their labor force with foreign workers. The first phase of the world's largest hydro-solar power station at the highest altitude has been put into the operation beginning Sunday. The first phase of Gala Photovoltaic Power Station is located on a mountain at an altitude of 4,600 meters in Yanjiang County of Gurs Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture of Southwest China's Sichuan Province. With an annual energy output of 2 billion kilowatt per hour, it has the capacity to meet the energy demand of up to 700,000 households. As a landmark project of the Yalong River Clean Energy Demonstration Base, the first phase of the power station has an installed capacity of 1 million kilowatts. The demonstration base once completed, will have an installed capacity of 100 million kilowatts and is expected to produce 300 billion kilowatts per hour annually which is sufficient to meet the power demand of 100 million households The installation of a giant offshore wind turbine with the world's largest per unit capacity started in East China's Fujian province on Sunday. The 16 megawatt wind turbine is equipped with a 146 meter hub equal to the height of a 50 story building and has the world's longest impeller diameter of 252 meters and the lightest per megawatt weight. According to China Three Gorks Corporation, one of the equipment developers. The components of the wind turbine had been shipped to the Waiha offshore wind farm of the Pinton County days earlier. At around 3 a.m. on Saturday, the Waiha plan installation vessel arrived at the designated site after it completed the installation work of a 13 megawatt wind turbine the night before. It then inserted its four legs into the seabed and elevated the platform to hoist the tower of the wind turbine. The vessel, the country's most advanced wind tower installation facility that integrates functions including transport and self elevation, has a lift capacity of 2,000 tons and enables underwater operation at a maximum depth of 70 meters. The current global economic situation has affected the Vietnamese economy. Despite the downturn, a total foreign direct investment in the first five months of the year increased by over 10% compared to the first four months of last year. With the competition to attract foreign investment growing increasingly fierce, Vietnam must boost its efforts to attract more high-quality FDI.
Refugee Week in Hong Kong to first ever vaccine producing plant in Bangladesh. Here are the stories. Thirty-one people were killed and seven others injured in an explosion ripping through a barbecue restaurant in the northwestern Chinese city of Yinchuan on Wednesday. The blast in Yinchuan, capital of northwest China's Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region, was caused by a leaking liquefied petroleum gas tank at a restaurant around 20.40 p.m. The blast caused a total of 38 casualties as of 8 a.m. on Thursday. The seven injured included one in critical condition, one with moderate burns, two with mild symptoms, and two with scratches from broken glasses. Witnesses said the explosion of gas tank on the first floor triggered another blast of natural gas pipelines on the second floor. The cause of explosions is under investigation. Local firefighting authorities have dispatched 20 vehicles and over 100 rescue personnel to the site, with search and rescue operations continuing until 4 a.m. on Thursday morning. UN Chief Antonio Guterres criticized the international financial system. UN Chief Antonio Guterres criticized the international financial system, saying it is outdated and has failed to provide a safety net for developing countries. Speaking at the Paris summit for a new global financing pact, Guterres described the global financial system as dysfunctional and unfair adding that it does not reflect the current geopolitical tensions and growing systemic risk. He warned that the world risks fragmentation in both finance and geopolitics. The summit hosted by French President Emmanuel Macron, which is takes place on Thursday and Friday. Around 50 world leaders and heads of international organizations are attending to discuss ways to tackle poverty and climate change at the same time. with the COVID-19 vaccine will be produced in phases, he said.
According to a report by UK-based adventure travel company Explore Worldwide, Hanoi has topped a list of the world's best cities for solo travel, while Ho Chi Minh City ranks sixth. By analyzing Google search data from the last two years, the company has determined the places that are seeing the biggest boost in solo travel online searches. Hanoi saw a 946% rise in year-on-year -year solo travel searches. Ho Chi Minh City ranked sixth, with a solo travel search increase of 480%. The rest of the top 10 were Kuala Lumpur, Perth, Singapore, and Sydney. Hanoi received 1.5 million foreign tourists last year, just over a quarter of 2019. The capital plans to attract 3 million foreign tourists this year. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Your Word. I'm Dara Kamarani. Thank you for watching and see you next week.